Hi, Jess Park here. I want to talk about fake reflections today and how they may still be useful in your workflow in Blender or any other 3D package for that matter. Uh, so what are fake reflections? Well, fake reflections are those sorts of, of fake issue reflections that aren't anything in particular, uh, but just help to add some sort of light and dark areas uh, to the reflections in your image. Um, well, that's kind of my version of it anyway. Uh, although, having said that, a fake reflection is just basically anything that an object is reflecting that's not actually using a ray traced uh, or a ray to reflect its environment, if you like, or its near environment. What do I mean by that? Okay, got two cubes here, a cube one and a cube two. Cube two, and let's pop uh, on rendered and we'll see them here. This is an EV in Blender 2.8 beta. And on the right hand side, what we'll do is we'll just make sure that we have everything kind of uh, that can be up to help us show reflection on this particular cube. And at the moment, the only thing that's reflecting is the light, which is up there somewhere. And uh, just to show that, let's go to that light and make it a little bit bigger. There we go. You can start to see it reflecting a bit better there. So, initially, if we were to, most of us were to set up a scene, we would have a, a scene where something's going to be reflected. We would have an environment uh, that is going to uh, show in the reflections of our object. And to do that, we go to the world view, and that is here. And if you want to click on to the nodes, you just click on use nodes. And, uh, but basically, there's a drop down here. So we go to world and we add an environment texture so add environment texture and here we will add let's go to our high dynamic range images and hdi haven uh, if you have no one's heard of it i'm sure you've all heard of it uh, basically they give some he gives always some brilliant high dynamic range images for free uh, but although he is looking for support uh, in this case i'm going to use this Skylit Garage High Dynamic Range image. And I'm going to pop that in the background, just link that to the background itself. And now you'll see straight away we have this kind of garage um, in the background and our cube here on the right is reflecting it. And what's nice of course is we're using the principled shader here. Uh, so it's got a nice, it's using all the I don't know, the, the real balance, if you like, the Fresnel effect, and so it's more reflected on the sides and than it is on the front, that sort of thing. And it's all set up for you, so you don't have to worry about anything else, particularly you've got your metallic texture, and you don't have to use metallic, of course, you can just take the roughness right down. And you would need to change the colour if you're not using the metallic texture to, to see the reflection, uh, but personally I quite like to have it come on just for now a very shiny meta metal texture now on our left here our cube 2 we can also have the same reflection uh, without using reflections that might sound silly uh, but uh, I'll demonstrate exactly what I mean I'm going to unplug the principled shader and I'm going to add a few nodes here we'll start with a texture coordinate node our next one will be a mapping node. Our next one will actually be another environment texture. And our final one for now will be a different shader. We use an emission shader. And we're going to take the reflection texture coordinates out into our mapping. From our vector here, we come into here. Let's just put the same image as we're using in our background, Skylit's Garage. And then we'll plug these two in and voila. You see it's actually a little bit more reflective because it's pure 100% if you like reflecting its environment now. And it's the same image. And so I basically I've faked it. I've got a fake reflection going on. Uh, but there's not an awful lot of point in having a fake reflection when you don't need to. Uh, unless, of course, you want to. What's quite nice now is you can, I can change my background image slightly if it's you know if it's if it's not quite in the right place let's say for example there's I don't know a lamppost or something or a light here you think oh I don't like that light there I'm going to just move a little bit of course you could do that sort of thing here but that's not really what I'm talking about with fake reflections 
I'm talking about reflections that look fake. Uh, and so we need a fake looking reflection for that. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to kind of go over how you might do that in Blender, actually make the reflection. Uh, but let's just go to the UV editing window for a moment and have a look at this image. It's a panoramic image. It's spherically wrapped around our scene. Uh, so if, imagine taking the ends here and wrapping it around a sphere. Basically, that's what's happening in our scene here. So wherever, wherever we look, up or down, uh, we are going to see this uh, this image, which is, works really well. So this image that we need to map on to this, this uh, cube here needs to be the same. It needs to be spherically mapped around. And so it kind of needs to be seamless, ideally, especially if you want to do some little animations with it, which we're going to do. And especially if you don't want that kind of pinching that you're going to get in the top and the bottom. Uh, so I've already uh, done some images. I'm going to load a new image, that one I made a little bit earlier, which I'm going to show you how I made it. Let's choose this one here. Gonna pop that in and straight away, here's my fake reflection. Now it looks fake, which is the whole point. And it kind of gives you that kind of old, kind of fakey, almost cartoony reflections, which on one hand, it works really well if, you, if you're looking for that style, uh, but you can also add it subtly to your real reflections. What do I mean by that? So, okay, let's, let's combine the principled BSDF shader with the reflection here that we've got. And so if I just take up the metallic, let's just swap it for a moment. So I'm gonna make this metallic roughness right down. So I've got the same as I have on my right, on my left. So now let's add a mix shader. Where are you, mix shader? And let's combine the two. And so depending on my factor here, I can have a little bit more of one or the other. So there's my normal reflection, but I just wanna have a little bit of extra reflection on there. So from that point of view, it could work quite well. So that's that's in one in this particular instance. And so there we have our fake reflections. So uh, you need a fake reflection to to make a fake fake reflection. Uh, so let's let's make a fake reflection. And I'm going to save that scene because I might well come back to that one. So I have a, a scene here. Open recent wave stripes three. And what this is, if I make sure I'm not on my camera mode, is I've got a sphere. I've just loaded a sphere, a sphere into the scene. And I've used the wave texture with some mapping nodes here just to create this kind of, um, well, you can see what it's like, stripiness going on. And I've also got a uh, an image on the top that looks like that where i'm i'm just hiding that pinching that we get and so back in our render mode if i go to the camera here now this one can't be done in eevee because eevee does not render out where are we now on the camera mode camera 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 does not render out panoramic images well these ways I haven't managed to get it to render out a panoramic image but in cycles here you can set your camera to unwrap effectively the image and I've placed my camera at 000, zero coordinates and so it's facing straight on and it gives us this image here so I will include this scene and some other scenes I've made like this that you can render out your own high dynamic range images. And so when you do render it out, basically just don't forget to put it on HDR. You know, you don't need to do a high dynamic range image if you don't want to, uh, but I found just generally it does give you a slightly better result, a nice cleaner sort of sharper image. And so that is our spherical map made very easily. Of course, you could just as easily go to Photoshop and create some stripes, uh, save it, um, and, you know, make them, of course, in a 32-bit 
uh, dynamic range uh, make some stripes you know use the polar coordinates that sort of thing and create something very similar in Photoshop so you don't need to do in Blender I'm really just showing you this and I'm going to include it just in case you don't have Photoshop or you're not inclined to do it in Photoshop uh, but that's really what you need and so that's what, exactly what your uh, your image when it's rendered out will look like a spherical panoramic image now how do I use it okay well I use it and so let me load the scene I'm going to also include in creating text and basically what I've done here is I have used the text tool to create let's go to edit mode you can see my text here and just so you because you don't believe me uh, basically that's A, that's using Blender's own text and let's go to the rendered view if I just pop it back to object mode It'll take a little while because what I've done is I've just put a texture on the background and you can see here I've got three lots of text the font I'm using is where are you text is e ethnocentric and I'll include a link to download that font from Daft Font. It's a free to use, uh, completely free to use font and it's quite nice, I've used it a few times. Uh, but you can see I've used exactly the same uh, method as I, sh I used earlier. I've just added a color node just to change the color if you want to. And we've got the front here, we've kind of got a goldy looking front. Uh, I've got, if I go zoom in a little bit, you can see I've got uh, a one for the side if I just hide that front one you can see this one here which is kind of set back a kind of silvery one and then finally I've got this kind of little outline now you can't do this in all fonts uh, this is a very simple font I've chose this one specifically because as sometimes as you start to or mostly as you start to uh, use the geometry options uh, the beveling and geometry sort of thing it does kind of like the, it, it kind of overlaps itself a little bit and doesn't always look that great uh, but in this particular case it works quite well and so I haven't only just put this reflection image and it's the same one that I showed you a moment ago uh, literally wave stripes I've called it and I've also added a driver to the rotation for each of these particular uh, sh um, text objects here and I'm using an empty rotation empty and I've just animated it over 360 degrees and as I've done that it's created this really nice kind of fake reflection look and I've got the actual render of that somewhere here there we go and there we go it's got it's quite a nice reflection I even added it to the background as well so you kind of get this nice feel of this uh, fake reflection and I've, I use it a lot. I do a lot of stuff for um, kind of uh, slot machines where they have to have this kind of like uh, very fake looking goldy, ref silvery reflections and of everything, all that kind of blingy look. Uh, so it's great for that. So I'm going to include this scene as well. It's not really a tutorial, this one. It's really just a demo of how you might want to use these fake reflections in your scene. So hopefully you'll make some use of it and it'll be um, helpful in your workflow if you ever need this kind of text and if not then you can just ignore this video but okay take care have a good time